Good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to our folks out on the West Coast, like me. Welcome to today's webcast, and thanks so much for joining us. My name is AJ Jones. I'm a member of the DISC team, one of several groups engaged by the HIV AIDS Bureau, or HAB, to provide training and technical assistance to ADAPs during the implementation of the ADAP Data Report, or ADR. Today's webcast is presented by my colleague, Debbie Eisenberg, also from the DISC team. This webcast serves as an opportunity to debrief after the submission of last year's ADR. We hope that all of you will use this webcast as an opportunity to ask any questions and provide any comments or suggestions you have resulting from this latest round of ADR submission. At any time during today's presentation, you'll be able to send us questions using the question function on your settings at the bottom of the screen. You'll also be able to ask questions directly live at the end of the presentation, which you can do by clicking the raise hand button also on your settings, and my colleague Rishi will conference you in. Today's webinar is supported by the DISC team, which is comprised of CAI, Mission Analytics, and App Associates. The content of today's webinar is that of the presenters and does not necessarily represent the views of, nor an endorsement by HRSA, HHS, or the US government. Before we launch into today's content, I wanted to make a quick announcement. Those of you who know us as the DARK team will now transition to knowing us as the DISC team. DISC stands for Data Reporting, Systems, integration and quality. The goal of the DISC team is to enhance the completeness, accuracy, and consistency of Ryan White HIV AIDS program client level data through capacity building, training and technical assistance, or TA, for recipients and providers. The DISC team offers TA and support to the Ryan White community on all of the data submissions that you've been working with us on, like the Ryan White Services Report and the ADR, and we'll also be supporting new reports like the COVID-19 data report, the Ending the HIV Epidemic or EHE Triennial Report, the HIVQM, and the AATC Annual Report. There is an introductory video and a fact sheet that you can review to learn more about our team, but you'll still be able to reach us at the same email address you've always used, which is data.ta at caiglobal.org. Also, Ryan White Data Support will continue to offer TA on all of these reports as well, and Debbie will review what each of our teams work on at the end of today's webinar. Also, if you've noticed, our webinars have switched to the Zoom platform, so you'll still get the same great content you've always gotten from us, but a slightly different way to participate. With all of that introductory content out of the way, I'm going to turn things over to Debbie for today's presentation. Take it away, Debbie. Great. Thanks, AJ. We're going to touch briefly on several topics today, but we're also going to leave time to hear directly from you. First, we'll review why we do a town hall. Next, I'll highlight some of the main challenges from the 2019 ADR. I'll also touch on what our next steps will be, and then I'll turn it over to you for your feedback, questions, and concerns. And I also want to note that I'll be asking poll questions throughout the presentation. So this is definitely audience participation. And it is another way to get feedback from you. And speaking of polls, I'm going to turn it over to Ruchi to launch our first poll today. Ruchi? Thanks, Debbie. So for our first poll, we'd like to know how was the submission of the 2019 ADR? Smooth, and I feel good about the quality of the data. Challenging, but I feel good about the quality of data. And those challenges could be internal to your agency and process or external, like the last minute careware update that happened this year. The third option is challenging, and I'm concerned about the quality of data, and I wasn't involved with submission. And if you're having any of those challenges, um, or if you had any of those challenges, please also feel free to chat them into us um, so we can have a couple examples of some things while we're dealing with. So I will 
we'll give a few more moments for uh, people to finish up the polling. And okay. So it looks like 10% of you felt the submission was smooth and you feel good about the quality of the data. 51%, half of you guys said that the submission was challenging, but you feel good about the quality of the data. 8% found it challenging and you're concerned about the quality of data. And 31% were not involved with the submission. I'll turn it back over to you, Debbie. Great, thanks so much, Ruchi. So it sounds like a lot of folks did have challenges, although the majority said it didn't affect data quality, so good to hear. And as Ruchi noted, throughout today's uh, webinar, we do wanna hear and better understand those challenges and understand what we might be able to do uh, to support addressing them in the future. So we will be using the input today to review any requirements that we may need clarifications. And we're also gonna use your feedback to revise existing tools and materials. For example, we may modify language in the instruction manual so it is clear if that was one of the challenges noted. Or if you find that a report in the ADR web system is not that intuitive, say the validation report or the upload completeness report, we may update that tool. We'll also take today as an opportunity to increase awareness of existing tools and resources. Other than today, there are a couple of other venues we'll use to get your input. First, we communicate with you through our regular fall calls and data quality outreach, which I'll discuss more later on in the presentation. We are also in the process of carefully reviewing your ADR comments from the 2019 submission to understand your specific program and how it affects data collection and submission. And outside of the more formal forums, you know, you can always reach out to us for questions as well as suggestions. So let's look back at the 2019 ADR. It's hard to believe it was, it was two months ago now. So first let's talk about Careware. Um, Careware users are aware that there was a bug in Careware that resulted in the need for an updated build in order to do the ADR submission. And HAB does understand that having multiple releases is problematic and is examining what they can do in the future to help minimize this from happening again. We also learned that in several cases, ADAP staff were being deployed to assist in their local COVID response. And given that uh, the COVID pandemic and the care rate issues were both happening, HAB extended the ADR deadline and the extension was intended to give ADAPs longer given these issues. And I'm happy to report that despite these challenges, all eight apps submitted their ADRs. So nice job, everybody. It was a challenging year and every single one of the eight apps was able to submit their ADR. So let's review some of the issues identified during the most recent ADR submission. And we're going to start with the upload completeness report or the UCR for short. First, an ADAP identified an issue with insurance premiums. Specifically, if a client received both partial and full premium assistance in the reporting period, they were actually counted twice in the insurance premium and months coverage denominators of the upload completeness report. And you can see that here in the red boxes, it's where the end would be. Since this isn't a very common occurrence based on talking to ADAPs in terms of people getting both, the impact on ADAPs was limited and it also had no effect on the underlying data. It was solely how the data were represented in the upload completeness report. So basically it created confusion and we have let HAB know about that. There was also a duplicate listing in the medication table for Triumec. And this is because there's a small difference if you look at the generic name um, for each of the listings, but both the N and the percentage are identical. So even though it's listed twice, the content is exactly the same for the N and the percent. Again, we forwarded the suggestion to have that one of the entries on the UCR be removed to uh, avoid any confusion. Also related to medications, we found that the existing medication summary table 
was a little confusing because the denominator is the number of clients with medication services and the numerator is the number of dispenses with that decode. So it could be over 100%. It's more intuitive for the numerator to be the number of clients with that decode. So we've also suggested that change to have. Now time for our second poll. We'd like to get a better sense of why you may or may not use the UCR and what else we could do to improve it. So I'm gonna turn things over again to Ruchi. Ruchi? Thanks, Debbie. So our second poll question is, how would you best describe your use of the UCR for the ADR submission? It helped me identify data quality issues. It helped me, but I have suggestions about content. I knew it was available, but I did not use it. Or I did not know that it was available. Again, the question is, how would you best describe your use of the UCR for the ADR submission? It helped me I did identify data quality issues. It helped me, but I have suggestions about content. I knew it was available, but I did not use it, or I did not know that it was available. Great, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like 34% of you said that you help, it helped you identify data quality issues. 9% said it helped you, but you have suggestions about content. 11% said you knew that it was available, but you did not use it. And 46%, almost half of you, did not know that the UCR was available. Debbie? Great, thanks, Ruchi. So hopefully the 46% of you, we've tackled that, right? So you know it's available, and we definitely will have future webinars go over it in more detail, but it is a report in the system to support you. Uh, for those of you who have suggestions, please chat them in. We want to hear your suggestions about what you have. You can also let us know during the question answer period if you have a suggestion, but feel free to chat them in to us. Um, again, that's on the menu bar at the bottom of your screen and uh, let us know what changes you'd like to see. Um, a third of you said it helped you identify data quality issues. That's the purpose of it. So it's great to hear that. Um, so, and a small portion didn't use it, but knew it was available. We definitely want everyone to use it and we'll talk more about that in the future. So we're gonna shift a little bit to discuss tracks. There were some limited tracks issues this year. And for those of you who use tracks, it is a free application that HAM provides to create the XML. Uh, a few of the larger ADAPs noted that tracks was taking longer to run this year. And the programming behind the scenes was updated, so the records were processed a little differently. We've already let HAB know, so this can be addressed moving forward. Um, the other issue is not new, but creates confusion each year. Specifically, the data format required for tracks is different from what is listed in the schema and creates errors in tracks. We'll be sure to highlight this issue in the tracks manual moving forward. There also continues to be some confusion about importing into Careware. And remember, be sure to use the Careware Provider Data Import or PDI specifications. It's actually a document you can get from the Careware Help Desk. And if you have any questions, reach out to the Careware Help direct directly for technical assistance. And I'll give you that contact information a little later in the webinar. There was also some confusion about how to enter ADAP application receive date, application approved date, and recertification date that resulted in some ADAPs receiving validation warnings. And it is easy to get confused because even though I just listed three different data elements in the ADR, there are only two places in Careware to enter the dates. A quick refresher, application date is where you enter the date that a complete application for a new client was received. Once you enter this date, it should never be changed. 
the date that the application was approved is actually entered under latest enrollment date, as are all the recertification dates. Also remember that if a client was enrolled in the ADAP in the past, but is not currently enrolled and then submits an application to be enrolled again, the client is not new and that application should be reported as a recertification date in CareWare. Still have questions? The CareWare Help Desk can help you, so just call or email them. You can also call DART, um, or sorry, DISC team to discuss any questions that you might have around this. And again, I'll share the contact information at the end of the webinar. This is also a good time to remind everyone that there is already an ADR in focus that has several helpful CareWare tips, including the one that I just reviewed. We'll need to update the screenshots to CareWare 6.0, but the tip content won't change. It may also be helpful to know that based on questions that have been received over the years from ADAPs like you, the CareWare Help Desk has developed custom reports to help ADAP to review specific data issues. For example, these include clients with no services, application received and approval dates after recertification dates, and cases where drug payments equal zero. You can check with the help desk if you need a custom report, and the DISC team also has copies of some of the reports that have already been created. Also, be sure to use the tools in CareWare to review your data, including the validation report and the client viewer. So that's before you ever upload in the system. And as a final reminder, in addition to the HAB website and Target, Target HIV, check out the CareWare Wiki site, which has a lot of documentation as well as updates regarding CareWare. Now I'd like to switch gears to discussing uh, reporting requirements. Last year, we identified some confusion about how to report medications for insured clients. And what we've learned is that this continues to be an ongoing issue. Specifically, if the full cost of the medication is paid for an insured client because they haven't yet met their deductible, it should be reported as an insurance service. If the medication is not covered by insurance, it should be reported as a full pay medication. In discussions with ADAPs, we've learned that there is often no way to distinguish in the source data between a full cost medication that is a deductible versus other full cost medications. So these are often all reported as full cost medications. We continue to work with ADAPs to see if structured data fields can be added to source data to help meet this reporting requirement. Another area of confusion is distinguishing between full and partial premiums. As with the medication issue, there's often not a structured variable in the source data to distinguish this. So while an ADAP knows that they paid the premium, they don't know if it's a full or a partial premium. A common issue is when the client is participating in the marketplace and receives the subsidy, but the ADAP does not have that documented in a structured field. So they report the premium as full. If an ADAP pays the non-subsidized part of a premium, it is a partial premium. Several of your peers presented earlier this year on how they approach this issue. If you missed that webinar or you just wanna review it, you can find the webinar archive on the Target HIV website. Finally, we learned that for HIV AIDS status, there may be some challenges in the accuracy of the data. Specifically, it can be challenging because while the data are collected annually, in order to accurately report AIDS status, you have to know the client's historical reporting. For example, if a client was diagnosed with AIDS in 2018 due to a CD4 count of 140, but in 2019, their CD4 went back up to 500, they may have been reported in 2018 as having AIDS, but in 2019 as HIV positive non-AIDS. We actually had an ADAP that did a comparison and was able to identify that data from HIV surveillance will be the best data source to address this issue. So if you're already getting labs from HIV surveillance, ask them to add in HIV AIDS status as well. 
finally, we still can see that not everyone is reviewing the UCR before submission. And I know some people noted that um, earlier during our poll. We noticed it, the DIST team noticed it because um, the careware bug was actually really clearly identified in the upload completion report. That's how we were able to report it. But despite this, several aid apps who use careware actually had already submitted their ADRs. It's very important, can't underscore it enough, to review the UCR to make sure that you have limited missing data and that the data accurately reflect the services that you are providing. There is also an ADR in focus that we've created that provides guidance regarding how to review the upload completeness report and you can use the link on this slide to access it. You may also not know that the DIST team can review your upload completeness report with you. Um, we can do it um, to prepare for next year's ADR, we can also review it actually during the submission. Several, several ADAPs will let us know they uploaded their data and ask us to review their upload completeness report with them. So we're happy to do that as well. Finally, we learned that many ADAPs have not documented their processes on how they create their ADRs. And in addition to staff turnover, deployments because of COVID made this a larger issue this year. Without the documentation regarding how to use the different files to create the ADR, it can be very difficult for staff newer to the process to meet the ADR requirements. In addition, if the process is documented, it is usually easier to identify any issues. We learned from a few ADAPs that had new staff that the prior staff did not map the data correctly, but they didn't know because there was no documentation. So if you need help with this, hold that thought for a moment. I'm going to tell you how to get help. But before we do that, we have another poll we're going to launch. Ruchi, can you go ahead and launch the poll? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, last poll question is, which of the following best describes your ADR documentation? So you can just choose one of the following responses. We have comprehensive documentation of our ADR process. We have a few things noted down, but we need more. We don't have any documentation, but rely on the staff who know how to do this. Or I have no idea if we have documentation. Again, the question is, which of the following best describes your ADR documentation? You have a comprehensive documentation of your process. You have a few things noted, but need more. You don't have any documentation, but rely on the staff who know how to do this, or you have no idea if you have documentation. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll. And it looks like 21% of you have comprehensive documentation of your ADR process. 34% have a few things noted down, but need more. 21% say you don't have any documentation, but rely on the staff who know how to do this. And 24% say you have no idea if you have documentation. Debbie? Great, thanks so much, Ruchi. So um, for the ones who aren't sure, I'm giving you homework for after the today's town hall to please kind of find out what you can about existing documentation. And I know between, we have about half of the attendees, a little more than half, who um, basically know they need more documentation. And again, I'm gonna talk momentarily about how to get help in doing that. So now we're gonna talk about moving ahead and next steps. In the next couple of months, we'll follow up with ADAPs that had significant problems as indicated by the report comments. We go through every single comment, so it does take time uh, to be able to give you feedback. And just like the last couple of years, as I mentioned earlier, we'll hold calls with all eight apps to make sure your data reflect your program and learn about any changes you're making to your data management processes. We'll update the ADR data summary reports to compare 2018 and 2019 data, and we'll share those as part of outre outreach activities. 
We'll also work with ADAPs who haven't yet documented their processes to do just that. So this is the answer to that poll question. Um, the DIS team will help you do it. It may be as simple as using the crosswalk that is part of the tracks download package or using separate documents, but we can adjust our approach to meet the needs of each individual ADAP. If you'd like to get started on that, you can, rather than waiting for us to reach out to you, you can either email us directly at the data.ta email, or you can fill out a request uh, form on the Target HIV website. A few other quick updates before we hear from you. First, there are no schema changes planned for the 2020 ADR. We know that folks like to know that for data system updates. Second, the Multum updates that some of you have historically received are anticipated to shift to a once a year update, and that would be prior to the ADR submission. If you need the update more frequently than that, please let us know. Uh, you can do that via the chat. You can do that via the question and answer. You can also reach out directly to the DART team, but they are planning on moving to only once a year. And finally, a reminder that if you use CARES Act funding for ADAP treatment, so essentially you put it, the CARES Act funding into, the, into your program, you'll report those services in the CDR monthly report and the ADR. So there's a client level data requirement in the ADR and the CDR is the aggregate monthly reporting. In addition, you'll also report the amount of funding in the recipient report of the ADR. And if you have any questions about this, about the, the CDR or the ADR reporting, just reach out to us or to data support. So let me review available technical assistance resources before we finish up. The DIS team, which is the team that both AJ and I are on, we address questions that for those needing significant assistance to meet data reporting requirements, such as helping ADAPs who don't know what to do or where to start, determining if data systems currently collect required data, assisting ADAPs in extracting data from their systems and reporting it using the required XML schema, and connecting ADAPs to other ADAPs that use the same data system. We encourage you to sign up for our TA listserv using the link listed on the slide. We also deal with data quality issues as well as providing technical assistance on tracks and support in creating documentation. Ryan White Data Support addresses ADR related content and submission questions. Topics include interpretation of the instruction manual and HABs reporting requirements, allowable responses to data elements of the recipient report and client level data file, policy questions related to the data reporting requirements, and data related validation questions. The EHB's Customer Support Center addresses software related questions and topics include electronic handbook navigation, registration, access and permissions, as well as performance report submission statuses. Finally, the CareWare Help Desk is your best resource for any TA request related to CareWare. We encourage you to register for the listserv to join the conversation with other CareWare users across the country. Finally, there's no wrong door for technical assistance. What we mean by this is if we can't, if we can't help you, if we can't answer your question, we'll make sure to get you to the right TA provider. So please be assured of that. So now I'm going to turn things over to AJ for our Q&A portion of the webinar. AJ? Awesome. Thank you so much, Debbie, for that fantastic presentation.